All right, now that we've got things sorted out up here, uh, looking to resume the regular council meeting of November the 10th. Um, we have to address the agenda, folks. There are some changes here to be had. We have um, uh, section, I guess we'll go in this in order. Um, section 6.3, Transportation and Public Infrastructure Committee. Items 6.3.1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, have been requested to be removed from our agenda at this time. There have been some um, not up-to-date references made in those ones, so staff want to have an opportunity to review that, and it will come back uh, November 25th. Yes, yes. Councillor Collington, you'll get that straightened around. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then under bylaws, we have... Um, to add into our agenda, uh, bylaw number 1547 for third reading and bylaw number 1548 um, in that the at third reading was amended. Oh, okay. Move approval of the agenda as amended, Your Worship. No. Um, Your Worship, there yeah. is one other minor change to, sure. yes, to the agenda. If we can remove the planning and land use minutes staff will be bringing these forward at the November 25th meeting with recommendations. The, the minutes? Correct. 4.2.1. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. All right. Um, moved by Councillor Logan. Seconder? Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we will then move into public participation. It's your time, folks. Anyone who would like to take the opportunity at the microphone to address council, here it is. Come on, you all didn't just come down there to look at us. Well, some of you did, Dwayne. Um, <laughs> well, gee, thanks. Cut him off quickly, didn't we? Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll move ahead. Um, mayor's message, um, just a couple of announcements, folks. We are winding up this term of council. Uh, we have one more meeting slated ahead of us, November the 25th, but um, it is a time of reflection for us all on the great work that we've individually contributed to and the successes that we've had, so thank you to all. Um, a reminder, folks, it is Remembrance Day tomorrow, uh, Veterans Memorial Park will be hold, hosting a remembrance ceremony there at 11. Parking is always a problem, so get there early. Um, I think we might even get sunshine tomorrow, so I'm kind of excited. It's always been windy and rainy and cold up there. Um, election date is upon us. Um, there is an advance poll on Wednesday, and the final date is November the 15th. Um, the next council meeting has been put through to Tuesday the 25th in order to facilitate a new councillors, and that means refresher course for everybody else as well, um, seminar that will be held on November 24th and 26th. So that's all I've got for you from that one. Um, it's... it's it's two days, two parts. So it's not an either or, it's a both. Um, so we are looking then to adopt uh, the regular minutes of council October 27th and the public hearing October 30th. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, looking to receive... Um, Minutes on 4.2.2, Cycling Advisory Committee, October 6th, and the Report of Public Hearing, bylaw number 1547 and 1548, uh, October 30th. Movers. Nice. <laughs> That'll be Councillor Logan and Councillor Ellington. Uh, all those in favour? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, correspondence requiring council direction. We do have a letter before us from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Read the dedicated fund for wastewater treatment upgrades needed. A letter has been drafted uh, in there for us to sign off and send through to um, uh, 
Minister LaBelle of the Infrastructure Communities and Intergovernmental Affairs Infrastructure Canada. I'm sure all of council has um, read this and I need to know if this has your approval to go forward. Councillor Collington? I would move that we authorize the mayor to sign this letter on the city's behalf. Second. Questions, comments? Councillor Day? I just want to say I think it's a very well worded uh, letter and it certainly does uh, outline the city of Colwood's position with the $36 million required um, to, cr to create a sewage treatment option for Colwood. So um, it's certainly something that I have uh, tweeted out about for tonight so that our community is aware um, how important we feel uh, sewage treatment is and what the potential costs are. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, new business planning and land use committee uh, 6.1.1. Update on RZ14003, Ocean Grove, outstanding items, update. Director? Thank you, Madam Mayor. On their meeting of October 21st, 2014, the Planning Land Use Committee included a recommendation as follows, that staff address and provide council with prior to first reading of the bylaw, clarifying offsite and improvements and upgrades and parking. That's to do with the rezoning and efficiency plan amendment applications for Ocean Grove. Uh, we provided a, a, a memo on the agenda tonight outlining staff's progress. We have had very constructive meetings with the developer and are confident that we'll be able to provide clarification on points uh, on parking as well as off-site amenities uh, for council's consideration with the recommendation of committee for the uh, November 25th council meeting. Thank you. Um, so there's no action on this. It is simply just to receive, um, but we can have that motion and then we'll have com um, Move receive. Uh, comments, Councillor Day? Thank you. Um, there's just a few areas that I still have uh, questions about um, as to um, when the repairing area will be finished and who will be responsible for it. Um, and I'd also like to uh, be certain that there is a full representation of uh, what's envisioned in the plan available to the public in a um, mapping format um, that shows where all the potential lots are so that we have a full configuration that's available to the public and uh, that we have some idea um, uh, what the impacts would be of the removal of uh, one access that was originally envisioned for the area. Uh, so I just uh, ask that council um, uh, request those uh, additional clarifications as well. Councillor. Uh, thank you. I, uh, to Councillor Day, uh, I do think those uh, issues will be included in the uh, report coming in on November 25th, will they? Uh, through, through the chair, certainly the, the, some of the questions that Councillor Day have raised uh, touch on issues that will be brought up not only in uh, committee's recommendation but also the clarifications that we're making. Um, Council could choose to specify exactly that um, these other issues are itemized in the report, which uh, w was not envisioned in the original response to the committee's recommendation. Councillor Day. Thank you. Um, so I would move that um, these additional items be included in the report, um, including um, information on the repairing area and who will be responsible for it. Um, full representation of these um, subdivision lots. Um, so it's a, it's a report yeah. that you don't, you don't have a motion. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's oh. going to be, it would be either an amendment or a motion. It is an amendment. Yeah, so no, you're amending, yeah, okay, yes. you're amending the motion. Adding. Um, um, 
comment on the evaluation of uh, the removal of a primary vehicle access for um, firefighting or emergency access. Um, is that, I'm just asking the recorders if I ever sort of got interrupted if there's. So you got uh, three, three points? Three points, yeah. Seconder on the amendment? Second. Discussion? Seeing none called question, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, that will be then added to the main motion then. Um, any further discussion? None. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, item 6.1.2, Development Variance Permit DVP 14013-3672 Seashell Place. Uh, thank you. Through the chair. Uh, the subject property has previously had a number of setback, variance or setback variances granted for it as part of DVP 0907 issued on December 20, 2007. So really this is just a housekeeping uh, issue. This development uh, variance permit DVP 0907 had the effect of relaxing the minimum allowable, allowable front yard setback from six meters to two meters and a reduction of the total side yard setback from six meters to 4.5 meters as per the drawings of the attached permit. Um, indicated side yard setback applies to the easterly side of the property or is easterly side only and the applicant wishes to have the side yard setbacks variance switched to the westerly side. Uh, and with that, I will move staff recommendation to council. Seconder? Second. Discussion, council? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, finance, then 6.2, Finance and Administration Committee, 6.2.1, Report Director of um, Administration, CRD Regional Water Commission and Juan de Fuca Water Commission. Thank you. The Capital Regional District has two standing committees that they have put into place to uh, govern our water commissions, the uh, Regional District Water Commission and the Juan de Fuca, what is the Juan de Fuca? The Juan de Fuca Water Distribution Commission. So the um, municipal representation on these two commissions is determined by the Capital Regional Water Supply and Souk Hills Protection Regulation. The city is required to appoint one commissioner and one alternate commissioner to each of the two commissions. The term will be for four years, and that was an automatic change with the change to how our local government uh, appointments are done. Um, it's really a little confusing how their appointments work, but they expire on the first Monday immediately, excuse me, the, the appointment ends immediately before the first Monday following December 1st in the year of a general election. So this year it's going to expire on Sunday, December the 7th. We won't be doing our appointments until Monday, December the 15th, but the CRD doesn't see that as being a problem for the city. One of the requirements before council can make their appointments to the committee, to the commissions, is to make sure that there's public opportunity to make comment on those appointments. So this is part of our notice to the public, as well as putting advertisements on the city's website and on the city's two bulletin boards at City Hall. And uh, so that's our compliance for the notice. So we're just asking council to uh, support ca staff's recommendation to do the notifications to the public and to put this on the December 15th council agenda for appointment. Thank you. And Second. And shall I read this to follow the process? The public is hereby advised that the newly elected council of the city of Colwood will soon be appointing members to the CRD Regional Water Supply Commission and that the and the Juan de Fuca Water Distribution Commission and that under the Capital Regional Water Supply and Souk Hills Protection Regulations, the public must be provided with an opportunity to advise council on appointments to the Water Supply and Water Distribution Commissions and that these appointments will be considered at the regular meeting of council scheduled for Monday, December 15, 2014, and members of the public wishing to advise council on this matter may submit their comments in writing to the Director of Administration at Colwood City Hall before noon Wednesday, December 10, 2014, or at the December 15, 2014 council meeting where the public will be provided with an opportunity to speak to the issue. 
All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, item 6.2.2, .2, Director of Finance, Q3 financial plan, to budget to actual. Uh, we've got two items, I guess, here. So how do you, would you like to proceed? We've got Q3 and then the Q3 special projects. Okay, so I'm going to give some introductory comments, um, Your Worship, and then I'm going to uh, let the Deputy Director of Finance provide some additional detail. Sure. So, first of all, speak closer. Yeah. Okay. First of all, the information that's in front of you, um, we felt it was quite um, important to get before council at this time because it has been six months since there has been some financial results brought forward to council comparing actual to budget and there was extensive work done by staff on this because uh, the two of us that are sitting at the table tonight were not involved in either the preparation of the financial statements this year nor the budget and it did take an extensive amount of work to uh, get up to speed and also ensure that the information that's before you this evening is an accurate representation um, where actual figures are actually lining up with budget figures because it turned out that they, they weren't necessarily jiving when we did some analysis. So the report um, is meant to be a high-level review. We weren't intending to get into a line-by-line -line, uh, discussion this evening. The plan is that going forward into December when we can have our FAC meeting, Finance and Admin Committee meeting with our first council, we will have had time between now and then to have uh, detailed meetings, which we are scheduling now with our managers to go through um, why some of their results are what they are in terms of the capital. There's been a bit of underachievement there in terms of some of the capital projects, and there's good reason for that. We realize that, but we are getting toward the end of the year, and so this is part of our budget process going forward into 2015 is to have a look at what was planned, what hasn't been done, what's going to be done by the end of the year, and what needs to be carried forward. And I might be asking the awkward question, if I find something's been carried forward for five years, does it need to be carried forward? So that's just a heads up to the managers there. If you've got some pet projects that have been on there for five years, we might have to have a look at them. So that's just a bit of background on this. Now the other thing we're trying to do is streamline our reporting to council so that when you approve the budget, there's a financial plan that's brought before you and this report that you see this evening is in a little different format, but I can assure you um, we've had two sets of eyes go through this and make sure that with a couple of very minor exceptions, the figures, um, the total figures balance to your financial plan so that the first two pages of our report, you'll see total uh, revenues and there's something called additions to revenues, which are outside the general operating account but are generally to do with capital. And the total there is $24,902,000 and change. And if you flip the page over, you will see under the budget on the next page, we have our uh, expenses and also our deductions, which again, it has to do with capital. And that figure mirrors the one on the previous page. So this represents your balanced budget. And those were the two figures we were hoping to highlight this evening. For those of you who um, would like to do a little more financial analysis, there are um, pages that back each one of the figures on these two pages behind there. And there's also some additional detail on our special projects and our tangible capital assets. And I don't know that it's worth a lot of time at this point because we haven't had a chance to meet with our managers about why some projects haven't gone forward yet or um, what's left. Having said that, I'm going to turn it over now to our um, Assistant Director of Finance, Jen Hepting. Jen? Thank you. So maybe I'll just start with um, uh, an overview of the first report before you. So this is reconciling all activity to your financial plan. Um, and the financial plan is your budget for all funds. So this is your operating funds, your capital funds, and your reserve fund budget. Um, and it's a consolidated summary of all income and all expenditures. Uh, the second report on tonight's agenda, this identifies the special projects. So those are your non-recurring operating expenses um, and identifies those by what the projects are and, and um, what function of the budget they fall under. And that second report also identifies all of the capital projects and capital acquisitions. 
So the year-to-date results, these are to September 30th, and the budget figures, those are for the full 12-month period. Um, so just getting into some, some of the kind of high-level comments on the revenue, um, right now we are coming in under budget. We're approximately 12% under budget. Uh, the majority of our revenue generation happens in the first three quarters of the, the year, so we do expect to be at about 100%. Um, the, the primary reasons that we're coming in under budget, and we are expecting to be about 10% under budget at year end, um, and those reasons are twofold. Um, one, we've included uh, $1.3 million in gas tax revenues um, to fund qualifying capital and special projects. Um, and we're expecting that approximately a million dollars of those projects and the associated revenues will be deferred to next year. And so we won't be recognizing the revenue. Uh, but like Andrea mentioned, we'll be having more in-depth discussions with the management team uh, to get a real sound understanding of what projects will be deferred. Um, and the other component of revenues, um, it's with respect to the Solar Callwood program. Um, the financial plan included a little over a million dollars in budgeted revenues relating to this program um, and corresponding budgeted expenses. Now, um, the actual activity to date is much closer to about $200,000. Uh, we're expecting maybe $300,000 by year end. Um, and the primary reason for this discrepancy is, one, we included some in-kind revenues and related expenditures in the financial plan. Um, and also, uh, the activity on a whole is coming in. Um, much lower than expected, and we have revised our, requested a revision to our project budget to reflect that. Um, moving down into the additions component, this additions is representing um, funding for capital acquisitions, and we are substantially under budget there, and we are expecting um, the majority of the capital acquisitions Many will be pushed to next year's budget. Uh, we currently have $2.3 million included um, for sewer capital works, and we are expecting that those works to occur next year. Uh, so moving over um, into the expenses um, on the second page of the budget, um, right now we're coming in uh, a fair bit under budget. It's showing approximately 38% of the budget remaining. Um, and we are expecting by year end that we'll be coming in approximately 10 to 15% under budget. And um, the primary reason for that, again, related to the Solar Callwood program, we had a little over a million dollars in budgeted expenses included. Um, and the actual expenses to date are closer to the 200,000 mark. Um, we also have um, the consolidated special projects expense budget is approximately 800, a little over $800,000. And to date, we're coming in um, a little closer to about 200,000, uh, slightly under at September 30th. Um, so again, there'll be an analysis there over what funding sources will be deferred to next year. Um, and also within the engineering services budget, uh, we do have a $300,000 road repairs budget. To date, we've spent about $40,000. Um, so again, there'll be some analysis there, and any unspent surplus will be a funding source for future years. Um, so overall, these results, you can see that we do have a budgeted transfer to our reserves funds of $1.7 million, um, and we are expected to make that transfer. We have generated sufficient revenues. And um, in addition, because expenses are coming in under budget, we are expecting a nominal surplus in our sewer operating and general operating accounts. And then really, um, this second report really gives the majority of detail over the acquisition of the, the capital projects there. Um, but we haven't had the in-depth discussions yet with management um, about where we're at there. I don't know if there's any questions or... Council, any questions to staff? Looking to move receipt from this report?
All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Um, item 6.2.3, uh, CAO Continuous Scheduled Hours LOU update. It's my uh, pleasure to update Council this evening with uh, three successful negotiations of our letters of understanding that address some of the unnecessary overtime. Uh, as many of you uh, realize, it's very difficult to provide services to the community seven days a week when your collective agreement really only reflects five days as a working week. Uh, so for the last several months, we've been trying to go through the negotiating process with our GVLRA uh, through our bar bargaining to uh, incorporate these three letters that affect our bylaw officers, our R RCMP court liaisons, and our RCMP watch clerks. Uh, unfortunately, through that bargaining process, it was unsuccessful. So I was put in a position of negotiating directly with our local executive on these three. And I'm happy to say that we are now able to uh, direct our bylaw to work seven days a week uh, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then the use of auxiliary seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. Um, to use that as our discretion. With uh, the watch clerks, they're now on a 24-hour cycle, seven days a week and our court liaisons are on 12-hour shifts five days per week. So again, we're not going to be incurring that uh, unnecessary overtime. There will be, in some cases, overtime uh, utilized, uh, but again, it, it will be more effectively managed uh, through this process. Uh, at this time, I am asking that Council give approval for the third bylaw enforcement officer position established as a regular full-time position effective immediately. I'll move the recommendation, Your Worship. Comments, questions, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, do we, I, I, budget-wise, I guess I'm looking at the Director of Finance. I know we had budgeted for four days. So how how will we make that up? We actually have uh, budgeted for five days. Oh, uh, we did. We just never uh, expended that amount uh, as the it was the direction of the council at the time. Okay. So it's actually in our budget. It is budget. in the budget. Okay, so there, there should be no financial line. No uh, Im, uh, impact. Implications. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Sullivan? I'd just like to say congratulations to our CAO. I know there's a lot of work involved in these negotiations, and it just goes to show that, you know, we've got some pretty, pretty strong leadership there. And uh, also, I'd like to thank staff who participated in the negotiations. I mean, this is good news for our city really good news we're improving services reducing overtime costs and what more can the taxpayers want so thank you thank you yep. anyone else seeing none called question all those in favor opposed motion carried <coughs> um, we have removed as a reminder all items under 6.3 so we'll jump to uh, item 7.1, bylaws, bylaw number 1533, final reading Move for final. animal control, bylaw number 1533, 2014. All those in favor? Let it begin. Opposed, yeah. motion carried. Bylaw number 1556, final reading, MTI information, bylaw number 1314, 2010, amendment number four. Move final. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried, and I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything in that one. We're good. Bylaw number 1557, first, second, and third readings, elected officials' oath of office bylaw. Uh, bylaw number 1557. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Move second. Second. All those in favor? Question, comments? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Um, Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, moving on to the two additions that we have before us. Uh, bylaw number uh, 1548, third reading as amended. Move third reading as amended. All those in favor? Or, or, where's my seconder? Are we, are we, any other buddy? Third. Right? Yep. But we haven't had any discussion following public hearing. So do we need clarification? I know you got to talk about it. If council has any, oh, go ahead, Ian, sorry. I, I think the director of administration was about to say what I'm about to say, that uh, council has the ability to um, 
talk about the uh, the bylaw at before third reading. Yes. So we are here. Comments, questions, Councillor Cullington. <laughs> okay. I'm not supporting this bylaw. We have we have a good developer. We have a good and well thought through development, but it is in the wrong place. Um, Colwood was once known as the, the city of trees. Back in 1986, more than 60% of this city was trees. Over the following 20 years, we lost about 36% or more than a third of that. And over the past seven years, we've lost another 7.5% of the remainder. And yes, we are going to lose trees to development, but at some point in time, we have to have a conversation that says, hey, when do we stop? Um, we've got a lot of bare land uh, sites that are out there for development. Why are we nixing an area that has significant trees out there? Um, those trees are not just a pretty face. Um, as a couple of examples, um, they absorb carbon, a lot of it. A 40-year-old tree has got a ton of carbon sitting in it. And if we're serious about climate change, and I think this city has said in a number of ways we are serious about climate change, then we need to be serious about our trees. We also know that this forest is part of an endangered ecosystem. I know that all of you are familiar with the Gary Oak ecosystems, um, but the Gary Oak ecosystems are part of something called the Douglas Coastal Fir, or Coastal Douglas Fir ecosystem. It's one of the uh, smallest, rarest, and most endangered ecological zone in British Columbia. It has the highest diversity of plant species in BC. It has the highest diversity of overwintering bird species in Canada. We take it for granted because it's what we see every day, but it is globally special. And if we lose the forest on this site, there are gonna be impacts on Havenwood Park. We had, and we know that, we've seen that in the Arborist Report. We have a covenant on that park. We have a covenant on that park that says we're gonna protect its ecological integrity. Integrity. So if we break the terms of the covenant, who's responsible for that? Is that the developer's responsibility or is that the taxpayer's responsibility uh, for the restoration work improved in that? If we improve this development, we lose an opportunity to create a key connection that we identified in the Greenways Plan 15 years ago and we have talked about all these years. If we approve this development, we have failed to follow through in one of our key concepts in the official community plan of reducing car-oriented development. We said this area is the neighborhood or the shore, hillside shoreline zone. That's where we want to focus less development, not more. If we approve this development, we fail to look out for the needs of our urban forest and the benefits that it provides. And I find it ironic that it was about a week ago where we were all sitting around this table celebrating the planting of 500 trees in Colwood Creek Park, and now with a stroke of a pen, we're going to destroy that many and more. So it's a good developer, it's a well thought through development, but it's in the wrong place. Thank you. Councillor Day. Thank you. Um, I too will not be supporting uh, this development. And, and it's not because I, I dislike development, it's because we've spent a tremendous amount of time and energy bringing people together to, first of all, create Havenwood Park, 40 acres of natural um, habitat. And then we spent um, another, that cost, I believe, $350,000 to purchase the land that is the park. And then we spent an additional $50,000 on uh, developing a park management plan to preserve it for all time, creating um, a conservation tr um, covenant on the land because um, all the, the many diverse partners who came together to protect that park um, felt that uh, even council, even designated as a park by council was not enough protection for that park. Um, so we, we took that extra step of saying, not only you know, is this a special park, it's, you know, it's not a soccer field, it, it's a wild natural area, 
uh, there's a there's so many people who were involved in protecting that park but one person that I would like to mention <coughs> is Wolfgang uh, Gulick who uh, is a neighbor of the park at one point in time actually owned the park before uh, the provincial government purchased it back from him uh, and he brought many many different parties to the park individually so that none of the differences between various members of council of the day or different interest groups within the community would cause anybody to judge that land based on who was for it or who was against it and he brought us all together into the park and said isn't this just so <coughs> wonderful when you're in this park what's why it was named havenwood was because it was such a haven um, there's housing all around it um, and it's a phenomenal uh, place and there's been a few things have happened in that park one of the things that happened was in the windstorm there was a, a massive blowdown along the edge next to uh, Latoria Walk and uh, um, you know that that was devastating to the park and we've worked hard to try to find ways that we'll be able to uh, replant some species but it's going to be a very long time before that park feels park-like in the future and uh, the arborist report that was done in conjunction with looking at this development confirms the concern for blowdown in the park. It confirms uh, that this um, is going to be detrimental to the park that's adjacent, as well as to private lands, as well as to treed buffer zones that were saved as part of the master development agreement for Royal Bay. So um, I, I just feel that it's a terrible disservice to create um, such a wonderful park and go to such lengths and such expense to protect it and to ensure its viability for generations to come and then not take that into account when developments uh, next door are contemplated. Uh, thank you through the chair. Uh, it's always very difficult when you're when you're contemplating development applications and trying to protect your green uh, heritage in a community. Um, one of the things that uh, I think is critically important for this community moving forward is to diversify our tax base. We can't continue to rely uh, ninety percent on residential taxes unless of course taxpayers are happy to have them increase year over year over year. Uh, I think w this development is everything that we have been asking for over the past three years. It's got affordable housing. It's got mixed-use commercial. It's got high-density areas and lower-density areas. <coughs> to me, it's a beautiful development. I will be supporting it. Um, and I think it's incumbent upon all of us around the table and in our community to not ignore our green acres. We've got lots of beautiful, beautiful uh, parks around our city. But we can't take that um, and, and make that the topmost consideration. I think we need to find a balance, and I think we've found a balance over the past three years, and this development is certainly adding to the balance. So again, I will be supporting this, and I urge my fellow councillors to do so. Councillor Martin? I'm, uh, I actually have a procedural question, which I, I really don't understand because, and I guess I will look to our CAO because our administrative person's left too. Uh, my understanding over the last three years has been you move second, you second second, you have a discussion, and then once you vote on second, then it's done, and you don't, you're not allowed to discuss it anymore. Now we're in third and we're discussing it, and I have been in situations in the past where I've wanted to speak on sewer issues, and I've not been allowed because it was in third. So I'm just not exactly sure why we're speaking to this right now, because second's already been passed. Because it got amended at second. But we're not in second, though. We're in third. If, if we're in second, my understanding, that's why I'm looking to administration, mm -hmm. is if we're in second, hearing. then we're... Yeah, but we always have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. There's always a public hearing after second. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, through the chair, I can't speak to other um, bylaws that took place, but uh, we clarified this I issue with our solicitors after the Royal Bay uh, Fish Green Plan Amendment because there was some questions surrounding a discussion after the public hearing involving that bylaw. And they confirmed that there is no procedural um, issue with having discussion prior to third reading. In fact, it's very commonplace for municipalities to have discussion at the council level prior to third reading after a public hearing. We've given uh, uh, first and second, I believe. And third's been moved. And, and well, I thought that there was discussion prior to the third being adopted. It was our understanding uh, that again, there there is that opportunity opportunity for council members to discuss after second has been adopted prior to third being adopted. I'm, I, you know, I, I think this has been a very good discussion, and I'm happy that it, it's continued. And I just wish I had been afforded the same opportunities in previous uh, because I hadn't I was told that I was allowed to talk in second and if I had any questions then that's when it got dealt with so it's just I just guess I'm sitting here going well wait a second seemed a bit of a double standard but that's all through the chair I, I can't speak to past practice but uh, we are aware through our solicitor as the director of planning did indicate that uh, it is uh, an option that is uh, provided to council Thank you. Um, I think this is, is an important opportunity. When we switched from the timing of when we held public hearing, we used to hold public hearing before second. Is that right? Um, and then we would go through our normal process of we'd go through second and we'd have discussion at second. Then when we moved to having second reading and completed, then the public hearing, and then you go to third reading. If you're going to have a public hearing, you have to have an opportunity for council to make comment on that. Because, you know, I mean, that's part of the process. You, you hear stuff from the public that might influence your, your decision and you, you know, so you, you, you need that opportunity to kind of reflect back and, if necessary, make changes at this stage. So I don't think we've actually voted on third yet, but, but you know, we, we, that, that piece of discussion does need to get injected in here. And I, and I think it's, it is different than, say, you know, the bylaws that we just passed where we only have discussion at second and by the time it gets to third, it's a different game. <coughs> Councillor Logan. Th thank you, uh, thank you, Worship. Um, what we heard tonight, it's a good developer, it's a good project, and uh, we heard many reasons why we should support it, and it's a bit of a conundrum for us because, um, it, you know, it will be supporting um, other areas that rely on, that have commercial space and that rely on on uh, this type of development to make it viable and we're hoping that there will be another commercial component or an enhanced commercial component in the Latoria Valley. I guess my, my issue is, you know, that chunk of land's been sitting around for quite some time and it's never been identified as uh, something that we'd want to acquire as a park until its development came, came before us. You know, so certainly if this, was an, uh, if this was something that was indicated, you know, over the years, uh, as something that we would like to acquire, then I'd be very supportive because we would have been able to budget. And, you know, uh, it, I know Councillor Day said it was something that was identified in 1999, but it certainly hasn't been brought up since then. And I guess that's my point. If we were really serious, then we would have thrown funds aside to be able to purchase property, a property just like this, and we've had 15 years to do it since 1999. So I guess going forward, uh, I would suggest that uh, the new council then, if, if we're serious about um, adding to our inventory of parkland, is to identify specific sites and, s and set aside funding every year to be able to acquire those sites so we can uh, react uh, or be proactive when we think some of these projects uh, may be coming forward in an area that, you know, we'd like to preserve. And, you know, so that's... Uh, those are my only comments, but I will be supporting this uh, project. Thanks. Any further comments? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Um, or bylaw passes, I guess it is. And then finally, bylaw number 1547. 
bylaw to amend bylaw number 999 being the Colwood official community plan bylaw number 2008 third reading only need a second Dave? second all those in favor opposed motion carried uh, adjournment so moved all those in favor